Hi, I am here with wonderful nature painter, landscape painter, Sinead. Ni oh, you told me how to spell it properly. Ni Kinola. Kinola, yeah, very Kinola. good. Sinead Kinola. Yeah, yeah, it's a hard one for everybody, so don't worry about it. And I grew up in Ireland, but I'm not, I'm, I didn't really learn Irish very well. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I know you have the Irish spelling and I know that Ni is like, everyone thinks that the Irish surnames are O, Brian, or O, but that yeah. is son of, and Ni is daughter of, is that correct? That is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Kionela is, actually my mother shortened it, it was a longer version. <clears throat> And Kion is head of, and Ela, it's a, like, it should be F8. So it should be the de a deer. So it's head of the deer. So maybe it's like my spiritual animal or something. Um, I don't know. I haven't totally looked into it, but, um, and then the daughter of, you know, but um, yeah, so that's, Thank that's you. it. Yeah. So my brother would be, oh, he would be the son of. Yeah. yeah, and don't Thank get me started on Max and the rest of them. I don't understand those ones myself. Mac is a yeah, son Mac of is country. also son, but it's different. It's it was it's that's daughter, literally yeah, son yeah. of rather than yeah. of the tri of the tribe or of the group. I think they're slightly different. Yeah, what yeah. they mean, aren't they? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and my both my parents um, would have been Irish speakers. My grandparents were both teachers on both sides. Um, so there was, you know, there's all that kind of historical, cultural, I suppose, you know, teaching in imparting information to somebody else in the family. Thank you. And that's really, it's really beautiful. It's particularly interesting in Ireland because of the 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 way that the culture was was the continuity of the culture was broken or twisted by the outlawing of the Irish language when it was occupied by the British. Mm. Right. So so a lot of the culture really survived amongst the people that were native Irish speakers and there weren't that many of them within a generation it was really um severed in a lot well, of yeah when, when people saw English as being the new way forward you know Irish was what kept you in the ditch basically and to to get on and to get a job you were you know English was the way to go forward but there's a huge revival now in Ireland with the um primary school um Grail skulls you know <clears throat> so yeah, I'm really glad. It's a very beautiful, it's a very poetic language. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of, you know, the native Irish poetry is, is mm. really beautiful. I, I wish I knew it better. Mm, mm. Um, oh, even even though I'm a daily speaker of it, I wish I knew it better as well. <laughs> Leah Falofa, as my mother calls it, um, you know, I can I speak it, I can speak it quickly, but there's a lot of, would be a lot of mistakes, grammar mistakes and fathers and shavus and everything, you know, so they're very um, caught up in that, the language, you know, the correctness of it. And for those that don't know the fathers, the, the, what you mentioned, they are accents, like in French, the yeah. way they have a, a, a variety of accents that yeah. change the pronunciation of the vowels. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Irish has also, um, it has a lot of, to the non-Irish speaker, it has a lot of what seem very strange letters. It has a different alphabet and, and the mm. way the letters change the meaning of the words and the oh God, meaning yeah. of, the, of the sentences. Mm -hmm. is very different to mm -hmm. English, to either Latin based or, or German based languages. It's yeah. very different yeah. structurally. Yeah. It's very then different. you do see similarities of words like um, garden um, and gardine, jardin. You know, mm -hmm. you see the similarities of words through the languages as well, you know. Yeah. Um, and then the father would be like um, Chiron. You know, it's the Chiron in English, but Chiron is the, it makes it longer, father, you know. Yeah. Um, in in the Irish, so and, and yeah. the, the uh, you can quite often find you can quite often work out what's an Irish word in the English language if it has if it ends in een like smithereen. Mm. Een mm. at the end of a word in Irish means the diminutive version; it's a small version yeah. of something. Yeah. So mean, when you come across a word like smithereen, usually that is like something that's been made small. <laughs> yeah. I know a few things I know, but we won't talk about the Irish language for too long, even though I am also a poet, because, Sinead, you can see some of your paintings in the background. Yeah. You're really beautiful. Um, you were, you mainly paint landscapes and nature? Yeah, I have. Um, I have dabbled with figurative stuff over the years, um, but I have to say my, my comfort zone really is in painting the landscapes and painting the colours and just the, the vibrancy of it. And, you know, even when I'm like, like, you know, looking at statements and writing about my work, 
um, what's come across to me over the last while is over my, my travels that I've gone on, you know, and been in um, Australia and I just over these last few years, I just wanted to get a sense of what my work was about. And, and for me, it feels like it's like pursuing of these kind of energies and connections between um, the ancestral lands. Um, and, and sometimes this seems to have come through in my work unbeknownst to me. Um, what was it I wanted to say that like the constant, the the real, like the, these real and imagined um, landscapes that I see in my head. So some of them might be quite real, like the two up there beside it. But then when I let myself go and, you know, I follow, you know, the paint, this other kind of a spirit comes into it. Um, the one that I have better pictures of those I can show you. in a second. We'll, look, we'll look at those in a while. But yeah. would you say that the, the other ones are more like your your felt version of the landscape, what you feel rather than what you see. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm working on a commission at the moment and someone said to me, what are you going to do? And I said, I have no idea. Mm. You know, I went up there yesterday um, and I just drew, um, and I, I drew, I was just drawn to this tree. Mm. You know, so that's the starting sketch from, uh, you know, yesterday morning, I did a lot of line drawing up there. Um, and then I so can going. you tell us what blind drawing is? Because this is the other thing I want to talk about um, as we go through a bit about your process, because I know you do go out in the space and draw outside in the space. But so what, this, for people that don't know, what's blind drawing? So this one was it, it's, you know, there's a bit of blind drawing and seeing as well. It means that you you um, you look at what you're drawing. So my sheet of paper is here, but I'm, I'm covering my sheet of paper and I'm just looking at what I'm drawing. And it's very good for those of us who may have grown up with some kind of a idea of I can't draw um, or would be, you know, worried about it or it's not good enough or it's not realistic or whatever. So for me, it takes the, the pain out of trying to capture it. And, and I feel that it captures more of the essence of the piece and the fluidity and the movement. Like I sat yesterday and I drew just did one sketch after the other blind drawing, blind drawing, blind drawing. And I just got this like words of connection movement um just you know it's the, the connection is unreal because you're so present with it you're just there in that moment and you're present with the work rather than um, so your eyes are looking at the thing and experiencing it coming in and then it's coming out through your hand without yeah. you also looking down and checking what the hand's yeah. doing it's a direct it is yeah circuit so to speak it is a direct circuit absolutely and the brain is kind of disengaged in a way in that you're you're not you can't think oh this is wrong there's nothing wrong about you're it. not trying in any way no. and it's very concentrated at the same time so if you if you stop following the line like an end that you're following mm. you will lose your you have to stop and you have to start another one so oh, that's really interesting thank you I, thank you so much i came home then and i i finished this this has been um on the go since about april now i've another bit to go on it i have my um my feeder group, you know, my two children. <laughs> and they come in and um, they say, oh, yeah, I think you could do another bit there or that might work here. They're brilliant. Like, and it's great. The younger one used to always say, oh, no, I mean, they're lovely. You know, they're really lovely. You don't need to do anything. And the older one would say, no, nah, you missed a bit there or whatever. Oh, now both of them are doing it. And I love it because it's it's pure honesty. Um, they have nothing to gain or lose out of it, but they're also being able to find their own voice and how to. They're learning to look as well. Yeah, learning to look. They're learning to look. look. So, um, so I really enjoy that. And and then when they have friends around or any of my friends come around, they all have to get dragged into the studio to have a look. So obviously my studio is in my home. Um, I have a note on the floor outside now saying "Do not disturb." Mm, um, that includes the dog. <laughs> Your dog read? Have you talked? No, he can't read, but he's he's in because if he says out, he'll start barking. But um, what I like about I've always had I studio. When I left college, I won and I got an award for three months free rent in a studio, and it just set me up because I was I felt when I did my degree show diploma show I wasn't finished. I had more to explore, so I was able to continue exploring that theme that I'd started in college, and then continued on from there. Now we moved studios into a place that had holes and rain coming in and I just couldn't take it. So um, any house I've been in ever since has always had a room for me to work in and paint in. Um, even though I may have had breaks, you know, one reason or another, children, work, whatever else. Um, and I've been managed to. So we've moved into this house 2017. 
and um, I set up in here in the studio more or less, you know, within a few months of settling in. Um, and I, I did those um, those swimming paintings that I did based on my kids. But the landscape just called me. And then with the lockdown, you know, we weren't going on foreign holidays. Mm -hmm. They weren't swimming in pools. Um, and I just kept walking and walking and walking. And then I started painting what I was seeing. So um, can, you, yeah. can you tell us a bit more about your sort of <clears throat> pathway to being an artist? Did you did you start training like straight out of school? Did you yeah. like what's what's the what's the arc of your mm -hmm. of your, your so career? The, the, I um I was good enough at art. I'm a very artistic family of cousins who do who are artists, filmmakers. I have nieces and nephews now who are architects and um, one guy is still in college doing video um you know the gaming um digital stuff um so even on both sides of the family but it really came out in my generation you know to come out so i went to our college in waterford i did a year certificate there and then i moved from there to the crawford um and i did my time there and the i suppose the big moment for me was you know maybe struggling a bit with college and social life and all the rest of it but um, I loved, I loved painting. I loved the physicality of painting. And um, then we went to Russia for the end of year. I was in my diploma year. I finished my thesis. I said, right, I'm out of here. And um, oh, she was great fun and lots of drinking, vodka, meeting the locals who shouldn't have been talking to us because Glasnost was on at the time. And um, it was illegal for them to come into the hotels that we were in and all this kind of stuff. So, of course, we snuck out with them, went to Red Square, met them, went to their houses, drank with them, went to their pubs and um, just really and thoroughly enjoyed the, the freedom of it. And then I saw um, Matisse's painting of the dancers in the Hermitage in um, Leningrad, I think it is. And I was just blown away. I'm, and I've, I've written it like that. I've said that it was like I didn't have to be representational. My work didn't have to be. This was somebody whose work was barely even no paint on the canvas. Even like it was, I still see it up here in my mind's eye. Um, I can't see anything else that was in the building at the time. Just that work, and I came home and I just did the most amazing work. You know, all mixed up and confused and drunkenness and faces everywhere, all sorts of styles. Max Beckman, George Gross, Chagall, everything was thrown in there. And then um, I got a distinction for my work at the end of it, which was just superb. It was really brilliant. And then I got the, the, the free studio and then, you know, painted, 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 and then applied for shows. Um, and that's kind of been it. So I think even at the moment, I'm, I'm at a stage where like last summer I was painting and I was then during this last lockdown, I was um, applying for lots of exhibitions and I did some virtual exhibitions mm. in England and online ones in America, which was just, amazing the virtual one in london the holy art was just brilliant holyart.com and then um now i feel i don't know i feel i'm just wanting to create work i don't want to get caught up in submissions at the moment i want to get a good body of work behind me um i just finished work for the west cork arts creates in skibbereen the deadline is this friday and i now have a commission that i'm working on but I free reign with that so I can go go up there, get what I want. Um, I'm going to produce maybe five to ten paintings and let them have what they want out of it. So that's where I'm at at the moment. And did you ever have a time where you weren't painting or you felt you couldn't paint or you? Mm, mm. Um, yeah, I suppose the kids were small. The recession had hit here in Ireland. The gallery that I had been shown work with was closing a lot of places. These places I was trying to get into. People weren't buying art and I just said that's it and I packed up and it was you know with the two kids it was a bit hard anyway and I um, teach all time too so I um I packed them up and I kind of said that's it never again and then um 2015 my partner died um by suicide and um it just jolted everything it just you know there was a massive shift obviously I don't want to be talking about that now today but what I talk about is my journey afterwards yeah, and my yeah. journey for my children afterwards and the amount of healing I call it verb non-verbal healing we did tapping craniosacral um kinesiology um integral healing magnified healing I became a Reiki master 
Um, I had started that journey anyway, but I just continued it because I went for healing with her one day and I just couldn't believe how good I felt afterwards. Mm. I was like feeling guilty for feeling good. Um, and I think all of that too has fed back into my work. So before we decided to take the, the um, um, decided to leave our house, I had met a, a healer who said, no, you have to get out of here because it was an old house, it was stables, it was a ruin on it. So there's too much history here for you to be holding on here. So I, I left, I sold it really luckily, luckily sold it. Um, and where was that taking me to? <laughs> Before I left, like one part of the house had no electricity and no water in it. And I, I went in there with the with a, a sight lamp and torches and I painted the trees that were that I saw every morning as I passed by. Mm-hmm. And um, they were just it was like an ode or a parting gift or an expression of something. So I had those started there. And then when I moved into, I had to rent for a while and I moved in there, um, I kept painting. I just dabbled away with it. And then when I came in here, I just really found my voice, I think here in this house. And that was my wish moving forward that I would find my voice, um, that I would find a place where that would nurture me and move me forward. And um, even though it's a tiny studio, it's the smallest I've ever had. <laughs> It's productive. <laughs> and looking at what you just said there about place, yeah, like you know, reading through your your the, the stuff you gave me, I know that you've done a lot of residencies, and you you mentioned Australia earlier on, but I know you've also been to Canada and other different places, and painted there and experienced the landscape there, and 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 had this interest in in people, landscape, ancestry, like that whole yeah that whole thread. Um, and it feels like I know that currently you're particularly interested in painting trees and the forest and, mm-hmm. you know, obviously trees by their nature are very place bound because mm-hmm. you know, their roots go down and they're in that place and they actually hold the place together. They hold the earth together with their mm-hmm. roots, with their presence. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they also do this thing of, well, I always think they're a bit like, this is my crazy poet mind, when you when you have a... Um, a sewing machine and the needle goes down and the thread goes down and then back up and down and back up that the the trees kind of do that between the mm-hmm. sky and the earth mm-hmm. they kind of it's almost like they hold them together and like bring one from the other so anyway I'm sidetracking but I very interesting. it feels like what you're talking about is there's something about this sense of place Mm -hmm. that where you are and how you experience that is is essential to what you're doing when you're painting yeah 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 absolutely it's like the feeling like I mean I could show you a photograph like will I show you the powerpoint no well anyway yeah let's do it let's have a look at some of your work let's do it the one in behind was was based in the same place as the one up behind it again. And it's like, I went down to Ballycotton and it was just the, the darkness of the rocks and the crashing of the waves. And it just came into the work straight away, you know. I came home and I, I did this painting that's in behind me, the two of them. So sense of place is huge and water is huge and the reflections of water is also a big theme of mine as well. Um, so, yeah. No, I, I, I get that. And I think um, that kind of the, you know, the indigenousness of it and the, the, the connectedness to it. I mean, I've, I've flown over the Rocky Mountains, got a train journey through the Rocky Mountains. And I sat in this um, train. It was a two day train journey. And I sat and just want to do that. Was it the um, oh. what, what do they call it? The, the, the oh God, what's the name of it? <sighs> I can't think of the name of it. It was a, it was a good few. 2001, I think I did it. And like and I've been talking about it for years. It's brilliant, but like it's slow. It's very slow. It goes at a yeah. slow enough pace. At the start, I thought they'd never kick off, and then you just put into a motel for the night. Mm. And um, I went into a, a, a shop, and I I saw this book on watercolor. It's in there, and I said, "Oh yeah, that's what I do." So I got my stuff out, and I sat on the train the next day. Sorry, I missed the first day, but it was fine. So the next day, I just sat and drew, and the images kept moving, kept changing. You know what I mean? So that was kind of the start of. So 
Wow. It's like the environment sometimes influences you beyond what you could have expected. And that's probably what I like doing as well, that you go somewhere open hearted, completely open to the situation. And and, you know, the windows were massive, massive windows. Yeah, so that's the same one. Well, I can't think of the name of it, but yeah. yours is only two days. I know you can do like a four or five day version. Yeah, two days was enough. <laughs> really? And then like I got into Calgary and I had a friend there and like she just texted me or whatever, emailed me where they were. I landed in this restaurant with all of her friends. It was just, you know, amazing, amazing time. And then I went to the BAM Centre for Creative Arts. I had this massive studio, 40 foot, a drawing of it somewhere. It was my ideal space. There was a couch there for naps. There was a little kitchenette area. So I just cooked for myself very simple food. There was a canteen, but I just did my own thing. Went up, I hired a mass big Jeep, went up the mountains, painted on spot in the mountains, and then we, we did work on them back in the And day. it's so stunning. Did you go to Lake Louise as well? Yeah, all of them, Mirror Lake, the whole lot of them, like and that colour of the of the water, the sea, the um from the ice ice melting. All the lake. minerals, isn't it, from the ice? Oh, it's such a God. strange blue. Yeah. Stunning, stunning. So yeah, a sense of places, and I suppose the the show in Skibbereen is called Home Ground. So it's based on being in your place, you know. Um, and even going for me going to Pilmore was even beyond my two kilometers radius. So I was sort of breaking the law doing that. Um, but I went down there in January, and um, here I'll show you those if I can figure out how to. Yeah, let's let's get the PowerPoint up and let's go through that and talk about it. And then we actually have a few questions which we may not get through all of them, but we've covered a fair bit of it anyway organically. But uh, let's look at your stuff and then your your work. I should send up your stuff. Okay. Um, that's it. Can you see? There that? we are. That's good. Yeah. Oh, great, great. So what I've included is um, just some of the ones from the start. These are the um, um, the, the figurative ones. This is Darren in the pool. And what I've, I've noticed over doing these ones is I seem to like having um, an area of high, you know, high drawing. Mm. Quite a bit, and then this fluidity and this space and this kind of, you know, so it's tying in with the two sides. Yeah. The same here. You can see the movement in the water, mm -hmm. the connection between the girls. Um, and these are done from the pool in Spain. And this one is just so Dega like, you know, with the, the, feet, the thing you want. But it was a photograph that I took as well. Yeah. So, you know, the two girls in the pool um, an obscure kind of um, a, a view. And then the sea and the water around them. And then this one of Darren, you know, cut off mm. over to the side, um, the teeth, everything drawn well, and then just obscure, you know, kind of semi abstract painting all the way around it. And it's definitely something that I'm seeing as I'm painting more and more now again at the moment. I'm seeing this technique coming through. So these so, are 2000. And, yeah. I was going to say, tell me a little bit about when you're painting what are you trying to do like what is it you're doing when you're like because hearing you talk about it the looseness and the tightness what are you mm. doing when you're painting okay i'm not sure i understand the question so it's like, a really it's a tricky one i know are yeah. you are you trying to capture a moment are yeah. you trying to uh follow a feeling are you or none of the above or is it something you just can't put into words no it, it would be both but i think seeing this co a collection of work together you can see clearly what mm. what it's about so it's capturing the moment but also maybe that maybe there's a spiritual element in it that there's something else at play always like in this one it's almost like there's a, a dancer in the sky which i hadn't seen until close to finish yeah. these were um diversions was an exhibition we had in dungarvan um in the old market house art center and the we weren't allowed we couldn't go on the main road we had to go on the back road every morning to work so the, my they would be there with the camera taking the pictures and uh, had to tick tack like that so then i worked from for these ones and, and i and there was a series of those and then this is um a big swim one um a big splash so yeah we would be very much capturing the moment and and then more so in these ones capturing the essence of the moment wow um so this is this the boat started in the same place but this one was then influenced by so this is pilmore and there's more of them in a minute in a different kind of range of colors 
So the sun, a sunlit moment um, from David White's poems. Um, I'm robbing his titles. I just love his work. It's, I just love listening to him reading his poetry. It's fantastic. So this was the, the reeds, the grasses, and then it was winter time. It was just her that we were going to be in lockdown. So I thought, right, I'm going down to the beach. I got the paints out and I painted. It was, it was really cold and the sunsets were just unreal. No clouds in the sky, just full lit up sky. Um, and then I wanted to capture that. And then these were me going to the woods. I was doing a creative course and it was just encouraging, get out, get out, draw, draw, draw outside. Yeah. And um, this was the bird song. So I had i been doing a blind drawing and then I did this listening to the bird song and dotting, close my eyes. What do you hear? I hear the bird song and it's tweet, 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 you know, in a face and form. And then the feeling of the trees. So here you can see the bark of the trees yeah. and just that whole, you know, it's, it's there it's enveloping it's all around the sky is peeping through and it's are, like you've drawn the life of the woods rather like, than the woods yeah 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 absolutely. You know, like you know these thermal imaging but it's not like a thermal <laughs> image it's like a life like you know where the life is that's yeah. where you painted yes yes absolutely yeah i love that thanks joe um and then this was the one I was talking about, again, painted in Pilmore to start off with, painted in the same place that this one started off being mm. painted. Wow. But then um, I went to the beach um, and I, um, Valley Cotton has the lighthouse there. Mm. So it's rocks and it's dramatic and it's, you know, it's water and it just felt so fresh, you know. Um, and I always find, um, you know, you're in the studio for a while doing the work and then you get out and you just get a blast of inspiration again, you know. Um, and then this is that headland, you know, mm -hmm. so there's this the headland going down towards it and it's called Field of Gold, Fields of Gold. So it's somebody's dream. It's somebody's investment and they're investing in the land. And again, you know, this particular attention to detail in one spot and then maybe not so much in the others. That one probably has more. But. I, I I still I suppose yeah. I love the two of them yeah but maybe moving forward I'm going to have to you know integrate them in some way this again the same place this is um Pilmore with the reeds mm -hmm. and then there's a kind of a watery area that when the full tide the water comes in so this is called every dream inside my soul it was started in Dungarvan where I'm from and it was a blend of Helvig Head where my father was from and then um, the Gold Coast was over here, but I just didn't like it. And I just kept messing with it. And again, my focus group came in and said, just mess, just play, mm -hmm. just enjoy it. And I really enjoyed because this actually says more to me than the representation of what I had drawn earlier. And do um, the colours, do the different colours mean different things to you? Do they do they represent different things? Do they resonate like, differently to you? Like course, um, yellow was always going to be joy, isn't it? And red is just that that attractiveness to it. Um, I've read somewhere that pink is like um, being able to find your voice and being able to express yeah. yourself and be happy with who you are. So I reckon that for that is why I would put that in there. Um, and these, there's a lot of texture in this one. There's a lot of texture here, but this one has like a physical texture. So I've used right. this one hard. Um, and you, you're painting with acrylics? Acrylics, yeah, yeah, yeah. On canvas? On canvas, yeah. This one actually is on board, but I'm not going to do any more boards. Um, I just think it sucks up the paint too much. Yeah. Um, and this is on um, canvas. And they're small, as you can see from behind me, they're small paintings. Right. Um, these are what I'm doing at the moment. So I've just finished these um, again, the same place, the wow. um, Pilmore um, Beach. And then the water that evening just came in. There was an amazing sunset. So again, you can see the attention to detail here with the with the trees. I wonder, can I zoom in there? Yeah, I noticed that in one of the other in the other one you did yeah. where you said there was the dancer in the sky. I noticed that detail yeah. of the trees and the tree line and that's something that always strikes me when I'm because you're not that far from where I live when I'm in Ireland so mm. that, like mm. that because there's those soft hills and there's always trees isn't there on that skyline oh, yeah and in the winter yeah. they're like you see the form of them so distinctly yeah yeah no I love it and then this are these are like uh of hope of what may come so it's the idea of you know, somebody planting their maize or corn, whatever it is, and it's it's the plastic. Now, I know it doesn't, environmentally, it's probably not great, it doesn't look great, but it just attracts me so much. And I wanted, 
in these ones to get into the perspective another little bit. Um, so when I was down at Pilmore again, the same spot, and you can see um, the difference of that. Mm -hmm. So this is um, indescribable wedge of freedom. Mm. Um, in this one, again, David Weiss, thank you very much for the titles. Um, and it's the lagoon as as no as the estuary as it comes in from the sea mm. and it meets the river, mm. and it's just this little wedge, you know, um, mm. and the, ref the reflections of the sky and the the, the colours. And then, can I? Because this thing of going to the same place over and over, but mm. like every the different moments are so different. Mm. It is mm. like a relationship with a person. Yeah. That the more you get to know them, mm. the more variety you find in them and the more yeah. depth and the more like, like often people go to a place and they're, oh, this place is like this or this person is like this. Yeah. yeah. But your personal relationship with place, mm. it shows not just your own depth and, and variety, but the depth and variety of this place it's mm. alive mm. it's mm. a living thing it's a living yes. place yeah yeah beautiful yeah yeah no absolutely and the, the a few nights recently I went back down there and I just thought oh I'll just see what the sunset is like and I was raging because I had no pains just the camera you know because I love sitting there capturing it first it's, it just makes it so much stronger but what it what it struck me was that, well, you know, money has done this over, over time, the same subject matter time and again, time and again, and investigating it. And it it, it um the last night the sky was just blazing red. It was just stunning. Um and it's it's just like investigating it and figuring it out and and loving it. And the tide was never the every other night the tide was never the same. It was out every time I went back. Wow. So I would have to, you know, look for something else, but just the smells, the feelings, the sounds, and it's very quiet down there because it's kind of off the beaten track a little mm. bit. You know? Can I just say on this one, you can't see where I'm pointing, but the the painting on the left, the wedge, the wedge mm -hmm. of freedom. I really, really love the treatment of the yellow portion of the sky in the upper left corner. Oh, great. I There's something about that that I adore. And also the center bottom where you have the, yeah, that mm. section up the top and the center mm. bottom where you have the red and the orange kind mm. of washes over the you've got the very dark almost mm. like because there's this thing that happens in the landscape, I particularly in Ireland, because we're because we're so far west where mm. the night has fallen on the ground, but it's still day in the sky. Yeah, yeah. And, and mm. I, I can really feel that in this mm. in this mm. painting um that's us again oh my god you're, you're great but what i did here was at the end just on that bit at all can you see my mouse moving around mm, i love that bit it was it was the underpainting wow. this was the sketch this was the bit i did when wow. i went out there first and i thought oh my god i love that and then i was doing I these bits. I, i've attempted it a little bit here i think you can see the bottom of that as clearly the old powerpoint does seem to uh, cut things off but I just loved it. So when I'm trying to do these, these next series, I'm trying to go mind your underpainting and keep mm. hold it, protect it. Because I love the, the looseness of this, the I bare canvas here, and then how heavy and yeah, you know, these guys are quite loaded on the on the top here. Yeah, I love that. I love that piece. Yeah. Really Thank beautiful. you. Thank you. And then the You'll Bring Me Home. Is, is a title from um, Harry Styles. As you can see, I'm influenced by my children's choice of music. My, my daughter loves music. We have great playlists in the car. I'm listening to Willow at the Will Smith's daughter. Yeah. Who is just amazing, beautiful violinist playing with her and everything. Um, and You Bring Me Home is always like, not necessarily home, but home to myself. Mm. You know, these places bring me home to me, to who I am. It's so funny because when it was cropped, it, it's read, you'll bring me me. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't see the H-O part. And I thought, that's an amazing title. Well, maybe I'll change it to that. <laughs> you'll bring me me, yeah. That's probably what I mean. Um, yeah, they're gorgeous. And then um, I just at the end had, um, I mean, I've loads more work, but I just said I do could, mm. um, put down the weight of your aloneness and ease into the conversation. The kettle is singing. Even as it pours, you would drink. The cooking pots have left their arrogant aloofness 
and seeing the good in you at last. All the birds and creatures of the world are utterly themselves. Everything, everything, everything is waiting for you. Oh, that's gorgeous. Isn't it? I'm just goosebumps. Whose is that? This is David White and he's on YouTube and he reads his workout and he repeats it like he would say, the kettle is singing, the kettle is singing, mm. even as it pours you a drink, even as it pours you a drink. Yeah. You know, he would he would emphasize words in it. Um, and he has won a seeming stillness and you're, you know, about breathing. He's an Irish poet, right? I think no, I'm no, he's, um, I think he's probably some Irish there, but he's, um, he's English. He's oh, English. I, yeah, he's English. But if I remember rightly, if he's the person I'm thinking of, his parents were Irish or one of his parents were Irish. If he's the person I'm thinking of, I'm going to check he's, him out straight yeah, after. One of his parents, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's it. I don't know if you asked me any of the questions. I think I was talking too much. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. We do. I mean, we do have more questions. OK, so. so um I'll stop I sharing there, so. close down the yeah. share so we can see more of you and me brilliant <laughs> you particularly um I wanted to ask what does it being an artist mean to you um mm, it's uh, I love it it's 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 about spending time alone being happy in my space being happy in my head um it's a meditation it's an excitement, an exhilaration. Um, there was, I was looking at that about um, being, um, seeing for something else, you know, not just a daughter, a parent, a mother, it's been seen for something else. And It's a touch in with the spirit world, I suppose, as well, um, and the unknown. Um, at times, you feel like the conduit. You're just, you you know, those times when you step back from your work and the, it just takes over. I just, I remember, I love those moments. You know, they're the ones that really. And then at times when I'm painting and I just go, mm, I love this. You know, the way the paint would mix or yeah. something would happen. Um, like the um, sensuality of the work. Sensuality, obviously, yeah. yeah. A friend calls me an alchemist with colours, you know, and yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm and, and what would you say is the most difficult thing about being an artist or what would improve your life as an artist? Um, difficulty is the, the time. It's like a whole other relationship, you know. Um, the It takes priority. When I'm painting, it takes priority over everything else. This summer, I'm trying to have more of a balance with that. You know, if the kids want to go to the beach, yeah, sure, we're going to the beach. And yeah, I will go for a swim. And yeah, I might go for a walk when I'm there. Whereas other times I've been going, no, I'm not going anywhere. It's this. And you, you need the balance of both of them. You know, yeah. like I get up in the morning as I have two teenagers. I don't see them till 12 o'clock or one o'clock. Yeah. So I know I have a good stretch of the morning before I'm disturbed. And I will use that time to either walk, do yoga or paint. You know, and, and it's that, which one do I need to do most today? Do I need to paint most first thing? Mm. Or do I need to do the yoga so I can paint better or be more focused for the day? Or do I, love I, need that. To I love that you do that check-in first to yeah. see what it is that you Yeah. And, and do I need to go and walk in the woods and take my sketchbook with me or my paint with me? Or do I, as yesterday morning, I just went up to where I'm, it's my old house. So where I used to live and go up there and draw for three hours, you know, which I did yesterday morning um yeah. so there um how would make my life easier better um oh being able to sell more work <laughs> so that I could do more you know um uh, not have to work at another job a teaching job uh which I love and has its own challenges and uh, re rewards which I'm extremely grateful to um but it is exhausting um, I would love to be now at this stage of my life painting full time. I think when I was younger, I didn't always have the patience for it. I was always finding something else to stimulate me. Um, but now I would definitely be up for it, you know. Um, I'm looking forward to going back to attend residencies again when the kids are older and, you know, I can leave them on their own and there won't be either a house party or they'll be sad without me, you know, one or the other. Um, <laughs> So I'm looking forward to that day um, yeah. and just be able to, you know, go away for a week or two weeks, devote myself completely to it. Um, 
and even you know art fairs and stuff to be able to participate in them because you have to be present at them um, and at the moment they're just without outside of my grasp because of my situation and yeah, my a friend of mine when I when I first went back to being a fine artist he said to me you have to be selfish to be an artist yeah, you do, yeah. and it really hit me and that's when I was like okay so I'm an artist and this is mm. gonna you know it took a period of time but when one of my kids were growing up I actually couldn't do fine art I couldn't, no. it was only after they were pretty much coming to leaving you know finishing school and all that that I was able to go yeah. back to it because it is like it's like another marriage it's like the it commitment is. level yeah yeah and actually David White has a book on that called the three marriages and oh. um, I'm trying to read it at the moment it's it's a little bit heavier now than his, his poems but it talks about the marriage to a relationship marriage the marriage to work and the marriage to yourself yeah you know and combining um, I haven't obviously read all of it yet but combining it you know all and um what else I have not maybe I'm going off the tangent here but it just you know, doing the work as well and doing inquiry and my thoughts has been hugely helpful Kate and By uh, Katie Byron's work yeah yeah oh, okay. yeah Byron Katie yeah so Byron Katie yeah I always get him as <laughs> it's a name back to front yeah but it's a made Byron up name Katie, anyway sorry. it's a combination of names but um um inquiry into your thoughts you know so you have a thought oh there isn't enough abundance or I'm not doing it right and then you you know is it true and how do you know it's true and who, how do you react when you believe this thought so it gets you to focus on past and future and realize that without the thought who would you be or oh, I'd be just somebody in the studio painting so it's about checking in with your story and then you look at the opposites um there is abundance um whatever it is you know so that you can look at the opposites of the story as well so I've done an awful lot of inquiry into my thoughts and it's helped me to um find my voice better you know and and to to see where I'm going with all of that and to you know even as a parent finding my voice and yeah. noticing my judgments of my children and of myself and my surroundings and allowing that to to go so it gives me then the freedom to be present when I'm painting you know well the last question is what is the best thing about being an artist mm. um all of the above <laughs> I was looking at um, uh, Maya Angelou and her notion of you never know what your legacy is. You never know what you leave behind. And um, the best thing about being an artist is, is when someone buys your work and they love it, just love it. And they tell you years later, weeks later, a day later, I love it. And every time I walk into the room, it says something different to me or I see something different in it. And that excitement that somebody else gets when they look at my paintings or someone has said to me, oh, my God, I've been wanting one of your paintings for years and I've just come into some money and I want to buy your work. Um, so I love sharing that joy. And, and I think because because I've seen I've seen such horrors and I've seen I've been down, I've been low and my work acknowledges that I feel it does. It acknowledges loss because there's always the, the light and the dark in the work. There's always the shadow the darkness and then there's always the bright and I'm, a, I'm an eternal optimist I can't help myself but be optimistic about life which is <laughs> sometimes good so my work is uplifting and I, I it uplifts me and it uplifts those around me and um, it gives me a whole different perspective on life I have walked different places that I would never have walked I mean I sat yesterday drawing an old apple tree that's at least over 100 years old where else would you be going? Like, you know, it's just it, the beauty of it and the people I've met along the way. Um, and it always, like, it allows me, I paint what is true to myself and what's authentic, authentic to me as well. And hopefully my light will shine through. And uh, I think also there could be a healing in it for other people, you know? Yeah. So. I, I, I feel that about your work. I mm -hmm. feel that, mm -hmm. all that coming through, kind of magic of the place and the magic, yeah. The depth and the, the, that, that yeah ah oh, thank you so much oh Sinead we can't go without can you tell us where people can find out more about you your work where yes. they can see it where they can buy it so I recently got a grant from the local enterprise office in Cork yeah. I'm very very happy about that so um I am presently working on a new website um so my website is www.sineadnicanela.ie um maybe we should spell that out there so yeah spell it out we'll put it below as well <laughs> okay but, um, yeah but, but spell and it out anyway just it's so it's um Sinead s-i-n-e-a-d-n-i-c-h-i-o-n-a-o-l-a 
facebook.ie and um my i'm on facebook facebook um sinead nikanela artist and instagram sinead nikanela underscore six something numbers oh eight two um but you'll find it it's there anyway so i i what we're hoping with the new website is that i can integrate my instagram facebook and linkedin together so when i post once i am done um, and the, the website will have prints available, will have vouchers available and um, easier. Just it, it's just going to be lovely. It's going to be really good. So um, I'm looking forward to that coming through and having a nice, successful launch of that. Fantastic. How long do you think? I mean, I mean, obviously, it's a bit like doing building work on your house and it generally takes longer than you think. But how long do you think until oh, I'd say two to three weeks? We're very, very close. We've done. OK, fantastic. So what we'll do as soon as you're live or launching. Yeah. Yeah. We'll add that link, like we'll put a note okay. below the interview to yeah. say it's now live. Brilliant. Great. Yeah. As well. Great. Yeah, and in the, the meanwhile, if people, sorry. In the meanwhile, the if people way. follow you on Instagram or Facebook, then you will let them know also yeah. when it's yeah. live. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. And have you any shows coming up or not? Um, not West Cork um, on the 7th of August. Um, the most recent work will be going into that. Um, the, the 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 purples will be going in there um that's the 7th of august and that'll that'll be on i there. might be over i'm gonna come uh, let me know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be coming on the 24th of july depending on the whole quarantine situation yeah i might be out of, hopefully be out of quarantine and um okay. yeah are you gonna go to the private view well you see there's no private view which is a real pain i know Still? and i was all excited and i had a bnb booked but it's just open on the 7th of august but the okay. work would be on their website for sale through their website. Um, so okay. that would be up on the following week. And that'll be there until Christmas. Okay. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Great. Then what else is happening? Um, just working on this commission. And I'm just putting in for one other submission for a local exhibition as well uh, in Cork City. So on the Can people see the commission progressing, like on your Instagram? Do you share um, that? I haven't, I haven't thought about doing that yet. I think I wanted to get myself a bit more further along the road to see where I'm going with it because I'm there's a ruin on it and they have been doing up the ruin. So I'm I'm just, I've noticed myself circling around it, circling around it. Um and I haven't settled into it yet. Like I'm like a cat with its prey. I'm just kind of walking around it and oh I paint over here, I paint over here, but I'm avoiding the elephant in the room. It like so I have to look at how to paint that. <laughs> And how to approach it, you know. So um, I think that whole process is really fascinating, and mm. to, like mm. to record that whole process, even the circling, that's like okay. a really integral part. That's like yeah. you know, oh, I can't work. I need to clean up before I work, or yes. you know what I mean. You put on the laundry and whatever. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean. You get the breakfast ready or whatever it is. Oh know. yeah, and I've been doing I've been doing big breakfast with the girls so that I can just have the day then clear on it. You know, not having to feed them. But Mary, Mary Cassatt, one of those, you know, American artists said, oh, I have to have the house spotless before I start painting. And I have I have been in those numerous as well, where the house has to be clean. And then at the moment now it's not, you know, so it's like it shifts between yeah. one and the other. Like, I mean, the weather's been too good to be bothered with housework. Yeah, um, just getting out and enjoying it. But yeah, I know I will actually I will I will put up what I did yesterday and I will write about that and I will put that up. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Joe, for the encouragement. Pleasure. It's been <laughs> such a pleasure, Sinead. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really great. Thank you for bringing stuff out of me too and to recognise things that I, I was probably doing but not maybe always acknowledging that I'm doing. So that's great. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the interview but I won't go just yet. I'm going to stop the recording. Great.